Welcome to the RSP NFL Lens. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Today we're going to take a look at Jaden Daniels, who had an awesome night against the Cincinnati Bengals on Monday night. Um, and we're going to break down his day game now that uh, he's had a few games in the pros. And one of the things you're going to notice right off the bat with Jaden Daniels in this Washington Commanders offense is that there are a lot of throws at or behind the line of scrimmage. In fact, 37% of his throws up in, um, leading into this game were at or behind the line of scrimmage, and you still see a fair amount of them even in this game. 37% rate, at least for the first two weeks, that's almost four times, well, about three and a half times the NFL average for throws behind the line of scrimmage. So you can see that this offense is really featuring a lot of schemed plays. And schemed plays are plays where the quarterback doesn't have to do as much of the work as the rest of the team to create space and separation and then that's the quarterback's job to distribute the ball and you're seeing that here with this past Austin Eckler but we're going to take a look at more downfield plays for Jaden Daniels um, because in this game four of his six plays where he targeted a receiver at least 25 yards down the field came in this game meaning that in the first two games he only targeted somebody more um, 25 yards down the field or greater twice in the first two games. Um, in fact, there were only three plays, I believe, in the Tampa Bay game where he threw the ball more than 10 yards um, down the field. So you're looking at an offense that is doing a lot to create opportunities for Daniels, but we haven't asked Daniels to do a lot to create opportunities for them, at least as a downfield thrower. Tonight, that changed a little bit. We're going to see some examples of that. This first example may be a little bit on the shakier side. It's a 30-yard gain on fourth and two, and he hits the over route to um, Luke McCaffrey, the rookie, and he gets it inside the five. Now, if you looked at this play, though, he looks to his left, comes back late to his right. Now, is he looking at Noah Brown's route that's going to break back here, and he's throwing that with anticipation, or is he leading McCaffrey to the spot and not cognizant of where... Noah Brown's making his break. Noah Brown's smart enough to just kind of let this go and let McCaffrey make the catch. But you can see, it's probably a question that was asked of Daniels, who did he mean to throw this ball to? It is accurate, you know, to the guy who ran across, which is McCaffrey. So looking at this, you'll understand why the question's here because he's looking to that left side where McCaffrey's coming from right here. And then when he turns around, and shifts to this left to this right side it's not like he's looking and following the receiver he's looking to a spot and the spots where Noah Brown is breaking and then throws that ball and it just happens to be right in front of Brown where Christian um, Luke McCaffrey has caught the ball still it's a good throw you can see that he's likely have considered two reads here and he did it in a timely manner and he had plenty of time in the pocket that's for sure Let's take a look at it one more time here. You know, he's facing cover three, faced a lot of cover three tonight, um, which can convert to man or man looking principles here. But you can see he makes a couple of reads timely, no problem. Here's another cover three look. You're going to see outside shade here, outside shade down here. You got the high safety on this side, and they're running off as if they're leaving that outside shade you know, principles with these guys working inside with the safety over the middle. Looks like cover three to me too. Um, Noah Brown breaks inside, sliding catch. It's a nice placement of a throw considering that he's got a linebacker dropping back here to account for the, the over route or the settle route over the middle here. And Daniels is able to place this outside the linebacker and low in a way where only Noah Brown can make the play. Let's take a look at it from this angle. And again, you're seeing, you know, these are some nice downfield throws. He's always been a good vertical thrower, that's for sure. And this is a nice, quick decision, and he recognizes it. Gets the ball out fast. You know, he scans to his left, comes back to the right pretty quick. Gets that ball just out in front of 57. Low and away, good placement. Now here's a deeper shot to Terry McLaurin against cover three. You're going to see him as the end. Outside receiver working across. And it looks like it was a throwaway. If you ask me, I think that 
this is a case of Daniels probably coming off this a little early due to the pressure right here that's unblocked up the middle. And he just feels like, I got to get rid of this ball. And he throws it well ahead where the safety has no chance at it. And then neither does McLaurin. Now, you know, it's just one of those things where the timing is just so that if he had maybe, he didn't have this pressure, he might have seen this look and decided to throw it more to that inside and underthrow this so that the receiver can work underneath it, especially when you have only one defender in the area, the cornerback covering this receiver, and they're at the boundary here. This could have been a huge play. And I think this is where maybe his processing will get a little bit better. Right now, he sees this, and he knows he's going to the post. He sees that the safety is playing with his chest and hips facing to the boundary. And he knows that he's got that outside shade corner playing that cover three. He knows that this post is going to be open. Okay? Especially with the route that he's got on this side that's going to occupy that cornerback. So why not lead this with a little less depth than the way he did? But I think when he sees his coverage and he switches over, he just... You know, he just decides not even to take that chance. Taking a look at it from this point of view, I mean, I think this confirms it a little bit more. He looks to that side. Now when he comes back and he sees this defender right here, his first reaction, just get rid of it. This is a nice progression read. You're going to see him do a good job of looking to the middle of the field, and looking then to the right flat, you can see the triangle of defenders here. It's second and 10. He decides probably not to go any further out to his right side. He sees that this is reasonably well covered. So he comes back to the back side and he spots the hole here in this triangle, especially with the leverage of these defenders. Chest of this linebacker to the right boundary. He's not going to be able to turn around for that. Safety is running deep. His back is to Jane Daniels. Daniels reads that. He places that inside. And McCaffrey gets the ball, gets 11 on the play, first down. That's a nice progression read. He goes through, gets to his second read right there. He looks off to his left, really, comes back to the right, and then comes back to the man over here. So let's see if that was a third read. I don't think it was. No, I think he's just assessing the safety, the depth of the safety, and holding that. Maybe looking outside here, but that's the man he's going to ultimately go to. One more time. Yep, I think he's just holding that safety. Comes back, doesn't like what he sees. Fires it back to the, the little settle right there. This is what Jaden Daniels did really well in college at LSU is to go throw the vertical. And you're going to see this here. He does a nice job of reading the leverage. Drops back, finishes his drop right here. And what does he see? You have the outside shade um, defensive back here with his chest to the boundary. He's got his hips turned in a direction where McLaurin is actually going to be taking an inside stem. So this is advantageous right there. And so... Daniels reads that. He sees the high safety. The high safety, while facing the receiver, isn't doesn't have his hips fully turned to run. So if he keeps this ball placed directly behind the cornerback, he believes McLaurin's going to be able to stack and, and pursue that as long as he doesn't get it too far inside. And he does a really nice job of stepping into that throw and getting that ball pinpoint to McLaurin. And you can see that the ball doesn't go anywhere near the inside here. It stays at the numbers. So he keeps it on the numbers or wider. And a lot of that is, you know, looking back, seeing the position of the, the cornerback and the safety. And you can see where McLaurin is. This is good leverage for McLaurin. And he gets rid of that ball on time, pinpoint accurate. This is a nice play. You're going to see a little bit of a scramble to his right. He's going to throw it to Noah Brown, who's coming back to him. Catches it just a step away from the end zone here. Let's take a look at it one more time. Now he drops back, looking to his right. Looks like he's looking to Ertz. And then he comes back to the far left side. And he sees 
you know, McCaffrey, I think that's McCaffrey over here in the flat, but he sees that, that linebacker playing over the top, doesn't like the leverage of that. So he steps up and then slides to his right, and this is where Noah Brown starts to work back to Daniels. Daniels makes a throw. Now, one thing you're going to notice when you look at the film of the past three games, Jane Daniels has not thrown a single ball moving to his left. If you don't think that opposing defenses are going to try and get Daniels moving to his left in the near future, you know, you, then you're missing something because, you know, not a single throw moving to his left. Defenses are going to want to try that and see if he can be as effective. Let's take a look at it from this angle. See, goes to his right, comes back to the left, doesn't like where the linebacker was. Slides right and sees Noah Brown coming back to him. Here we are again, a little off structure. Finds Zach Ertz at the right boundary, moving to his right. We have not seen defenses force him to his left yet. And that's what you want to see is can we get him contained off the right side where you get a high rush, you keep it, you keep it packed inside and force Daniels to his left. You can see him going to Zach Ertz. You can see the linebacker here. Daniel sees the linebacker, watches the linebacker react to the receiver working into the shallow left flat, and he just throws that ball where the linebacker vac vacated, hits Zach Ertz for the first down. One more time here. He's going to watch 55. Sees where 55 went, throws it to Ertz, settles it right in there. This was a really nice throw late in the game. You know, two two fifteen left, third and seven. It's a clutch throw. It's an excellent throw, especially where he, he takes a hit on top of that and hits McLaurin pinpoint. Now, is this an amazing throw in terms of when he let it go? Not at all. This is where you let the ball go. Regardless of where the hit's coming, he finishes the top of his drop, one, two, three, and the ball should be coming out if he reads the leverage right of the defender. Defender squatting over the top, He's got inside shade. He knows McLaurin is going to work inside out here on this little double move. And it's not it's a very abbreviated double move. So the defender bites on that, and he's already bringing the ball back and out. And he's throwing it towards the boundary, letting him fade towards it and run under it. He, you know, again, it's what you're supposed to do. It's a great play considering the window dressing of the pressure, the late game, you know. So that adds to it and makes it a great play. But the throw itself, the anticipation is what NFL quarterbacks do. So I wouldn't get hung up too much on the anticipation. I would praise him for the fact that this was a big time situation to make the play and win the game. The play was there. He made it. Excellent job. So overall, what I'm seeing, nothing moving to his left. These were some exceptional throws that were made downfield, but the vast majority of his throws are designed, schemed plays, RPO screens, quick throw outs, um, you know, some play action misdirection plays that, you know, he they're one read type of looks. He can make multiple reads. We're seeing this here. So you see that there's potential for that and that it's only going to grow. I think that the commanders are doing a great job of putting... Um, Daniels in situations where the decision making matrix is not unbelievably demanding for him and it's well within his comfort zone and I'm not saying this compared that he's dumber than any other rookie or anything like that I think that the commanders are being realistic about what they do with a rookie quarterback and I think that's important um, a lot of teams don't do that but you're seeing here that He's getting the chance to make some reads and they're slowly expanding the offense for him to be able to capture some of that vertical skill. But early on, they wanted to keep it near the line of scrimmage within 10, 20 yards, quick decisions, um, not a lot of you know reads dependent on him. And now they're slowly expanding that and the Bengals were ripe for the picking for that in terms of their defense. And because they've established the run well enough in the first two weeks, there's some meaningful play action and meaningful vertical looks that they're getting out of the, you know, out of the grunt work that they've done in the first two weeks.
Thanks again for watching. For more RSP NFL Lens videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, Matt Waldman's RSP Film Room, and my site, www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.